am. Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to the long-awaited Hoyer Hall. Or should I say this is part one of two. I did ask you last week whether you would prefer a one-part haul or a two-part haul because I have some Hoyer here today. I thought it was 50% of what I own, but it's not. It's probably more like a third of what I own today. But I have a package that my seller hasn't sent to me yet of Hoya, and there are around about 10 plants in that Hoya box. So we're not including those today, but we are going to do some of the Hoya I've picked up in the meantime, because I have been desperate, and I mean desperate, to show you some of these plants. You guys did try and warn me, you know? You did try and tell me, yo, you can't just get one Hoya, this is a problem, you will, you will travel down that rabbit hole eventually, and I agree with you. It doesn't just start at one. You get one and you think, oh, okay, these are pretty cool. I like these. And then you discover that they can bloom. And then you're like, I'm not that bothered about blooms. And then you think, well, it seems to be difficult to get them to bloom. I, I think maybe I should try and get one to bloom. And then you notice that even if you're into foliage, there's a lot of really nice foliage while you're out there that you could really get into. And then you find out about silver splashed variegation. After that, you fucked. Trust me, trust me, as a new Hoya person, after that you are fucked. So today I'd like to share my newly budding Hoya addiction with y'all. I have around about 15 plants here. There are actually some Hoya that I own already that I have that I've totally forgotten to bring. So you will see them in the next haul. Not all of these are in great packaging. I haven't disturbed them since I brought them in. Some of these are cuttings that I've rooted myself in liquor. Some of these are still in the packaging that the seller has given me. And they're not on nice pots and everything else because I usually keep these Hoya at the shop. I've brought them home today to show you because my flat here just does not have the conditions for Hoya. So they don't actually live here, they live at my shop. They may permanently live at my shop, to be honest with you. So I have a range of different Hoya. Not all of these are rare. I know everyone expects me to go straight for the jugular with rare stuff. Some are, don't get me wrong, but a lot of them are not. As you guys know, although I am a rare houseplant channel, I genuinely pick plants that are unique and interesting to me. So you may see some plants here that might surprise you. Maybe they won't, I don't know. But before I get into the haul, I wanted to give you an update on this one. This is my Hoya Carnosa Crimson Princess. And I thought I'd give you an update just because what better time, right? So you may have seen this in my houseplant tour, well, not that long ago, I don't think. But I just wanted to give you a proper update because now it's off the shelf, so I thought now would be a good time to show you this. This plant has probably started the Hoya addiction a little bit. That and obviously my Hoya rare plant index that I did a while ago, that apparently I famously got wrong. Sorry, I'm learning. But whether I got that right or wrong, there was a lot of Hoya in that video that I saw that I liked. So between the Hoya rare plant index and just having this and seeing other Hoya, that's kind of got me into it. This plant here is kind of, I think you'd call that reversion right here. It goes green after it's been variegated. And I did mention this on my house plant tour, but I haven't cut this off. And honestly, I am enjoying, I'm kind of enjoying letting something reverted just grow out. Because you guys will probably understand this in my shop, if I have a variegated aroid of any kind and it reverts like a Monstera or I don't know, variegated domesticum, anything like that. If it reverts, I'm chopping it, I'm getting rid of it, I'm pruning it, I'm repropagating it. It's kind of refreshing, genuinely, to not have to do that with this Hoya. And I know I mentioned this. I kind of like that it's got a dark green streak in this plant. I'm really enjoying this plant quite a lot. And I love the way that it's grown. I think it's grown into such a beautiful shape right here. And I'll just show you up a little bit close to the camera, just in case you didn't know if you wanted one. Here it is. At least here in the UK and the EU, this is probably the most common Hoya you can get, minus the Hoya Australis, I think. For me, at least at the minute, this and the Hoya Australis is like the easiest thing to get. I'll not linger on this because we have a lot to get through today. This may be a long video, I don't really know. I anticipate it is, given that I'm going to be a chatterbox and I have 15 Hoya, and it wasn't including this one. So we'll pop her down, but I just wanted to update you. Obviously, perfect pop. Okay, so on with the bit you guys actually wanted to see, the higher haul. I don't know what to show you. I don't know how to go about this. Let's just do it totally random. 
The first plant I'm going to show you, you will have maybe seen this in a video before. I can't remember what video that was. This has been growing in my shop. This isn't new. I didn't buy this in any time recently. If anybody knows the backstory on this Hoya, this Hoya was brought in with a random shipment of plants. I don't even know how it got there. I really don't. This is Hoya macrophylla. I don't know if it's supposed to be Hoya macrophylla albo marginata or they just grow like this. I'm not sure. So I may get a lot of names wrong throughout this video. But yes, Hoya macrophylla, I will call it that. This plant here came to me and it looked a little bit more like, if I can show it, kind of how that is there. And it's grown a little bit more like this now. It's very, very nice, this one. It's not my favorite, because remember, I didn't pick this. I just kind of came to have it. But I've grown to like it a lot more as it's grown out a little bit more and it just looks a little bit sexier. The leaves come through really nice. They have this beautiful like pink margin on them. Really, really cute. It's a cute plant. It, yeah, it's just, it's not my favorite. As I say, it got given to me, kind of. I guess I paid for it, but it got given to me. I don't know. But that is Hoya macrophylla. We will leave her there. I'm kind of skimming over these a little bit just because I know a few of you may be aware of them. I don't know. I'll pick up this one because it this this next Hoya has grown like a damn weed. It is arguably the fastest growing Hoya that I have by a long, long way. I did say this in a Hoya rare plant index and I looked back at this actually the other day and I was really keen on it from the second I saw it. So obviously I had to have it. They are really easy to get from my experience. And for me at least, don't get me wrong, it's been under a grow light. They grow pretty damn quickly and they're pretty tolerant. So the next Hoya I have to show you guys that I am proud to own is the Hoya Wayetii. At least I believe it is Wayetii and not uh, the other one, which is Kentiana. But this is her. She's tendrilling all in my hair but she's totally green. She's really cute though. I got this because I love the, oh my God, let me just pop my hair back. I got this because I like the way that it grows. I like how like spiky and hedgehoggy it is while still being a hanging plant because my goal from getting into Hoya is to have more hanging plants. The leaves come in a little bit burgundy. They have a really cute little black margin around the leaf and it just grows so quickly. I find for me, there's tendrils before it produces leaves. I, I'm noticing the different Hoya for me are growing slightly differently. I don't know if that's conditions or it's just the way that some Hoya grow. Some prefer to tendril first. I don't really know, but these ones are 100% tendrilling and then they're putting out leaves progressively further down the tendrils. So if I show you that close up, because it's lovely, this one. I really like this. Again, you shouldn't have too much trouble getting this, at least if you are in the UK or EU. There are plenty of online shops selling these, so this isn't a difficult one to get. I love this. I just love the way it looks. I don't know if you can tell very well. My monster is still trying to steal the show a little bit in the background. Oh my God, this thing is just getting all up in my hair. I think I've had this for, could be two months. And it's certainly, I think all of the tendrils just weren't there. <laughs> and I think I had a little bit of length on the front and that's it. So it's grown stacks in that time. It really has. Really, really beautiful Hoya. Very, very pleased to own this one. And I love the fact that I've got a nice, big, bushy, full plant. That is awesome. So we'll pop her down. It's hard to pop her down without getting the tendrils on everything. You know what I'm saying? I will move on to this plant. Okay, the next Hoya I'd like to show you is, I think I know what it is. I did actually post a picture of this for you guys on Instagram, maybe two weeks ago, maybe a little bit longer. I don't really know. This next Hoya I believe to be Hoya Billabarta. I think, I can't remember which the right answer was because I remember this got cleared up on Instagram. It was either Billabarta or DS70 or it's the same thing. I think it's Billabarta though. It's not look at its best because believe it or not, I've had this problem for quite a while with my other houseplants, as you know, but it turns out even I can underwater a Hoya. So this Hoya was hella, hella thirsty. I've watered it. I watered a little bit the other day and it was still thirsty. So I've watered it again this morning and it's looking a bit perkier, but up close. And again, these leaves aren't like super clean or anything. I haven't really had time. I know it's really bad, but these leaves aren't super clean, but this is Hoya Billabata, I believe anyway. Feel free to have the argument below in the comments because I could be wrong, but that's what I believe it to be. It was sold to me as Hoya Sang Sangii, Sangi? Sangii, I think. Um, so yeah, whole big debate on it apparently. Again, Hoya experts, feel free. This is what it looks like up close. 
This plant has started a few arguments on my Instagram anyway, on my Instagram stories. So let me know if I'm right when I'm calling it Billabata because I'm not 100%, I don't know. I do have a couple more of these that I guess I could sell in the shop at a later date. I think I have a couple more. I do have one to still send to a friend. I haven't forgotten about you. I've just been super busy as hell. Your hire is fine but I do have a Hoya to send to my friend, Carrie. Oh, this tendril's gone dry. Honestly, you know it's bad if I can underwater a Hoya. I think I've got a peduncle as well, but I'm not 100%, no, it's not. It's just normal, God damn it. I kind of like the way this one's growing. The, the growth on this plant specifically, at least, is quite compact and the leaves are like cushiony, but rubbery, but slightly suede at the same time. It's kind of a weird blend. I'll show up to the camera again like so. Hopefully it's focusing. Really, really cute. Cute, adorable little plant. <sighs> too hot in here today. Honestly, I'm just too hot in here. Okay, so, uh, oh gosh, I don't know which one to do next. It's kind of exciting. Let's do this one. Okay, so yet another Hoya that I was able to underwater from being so busy. I know I underwatered a Hoya again. This Hoya will be literally zero, and I mean zero, surprise to anybody that I have this Hoya, because this was like a wish list plant for me, which might mean people have already guessed what it is. It, it does have a little bit of yellowing leaves off where I've underwatered it. And I know it was underwatering because the soil got so tough, it turned into a brick. It wasn't nice, but it's recovering. I'll probably just have to trim some of these leaves off that have taken a little bit of punch, but it'll be fine. So this next Hoya I have to show you that I'm really, really proud of is my Hoya Polyneura. And it's not a huge one, don't get me wrong, but it's very, very beautiful. Look at this, oh my God. This Hoya is also known as the fishtail Hoya, if you didn't know, because the leaves grow in a fishtail-like manner. A lot of people say this looks like a fishtail, hence they're also known as a fishtail Hoya. Um, I don't really call it either. I don't really call it anything, but it's very beautiful. This grows pretty quickly for me. Not as quick as the Way Eti, but it does grow pretty quick. The one thing I have noticed for sure, like no questions asked, is that this is a very thirsty Hoya compared to any of the other Hoyas that I have. I've noticed this a lot. And I've spoken to a couple of other growers that also find these Hoyas to be a little bit more on the thirsty side. For me, they actually break the rules of Hoya a little bit. I do find that they're much, much thirstier. Let me know if you agree with that in the comments. I'd love to know. As I say, this is all totally new to me and I'm totally just learning away. So I'd love to know what you guys think about that. Yeah, this here is a leaf that's a bit shit, shall we say? I think I've got another one. Yeah, taking a little bit of a beating here too. So that kind of sucks, but she beautiful, she great. Love her, very, very pretty plant. It's every bit as good as I thought it was gonna be, honestly. You ever do that thing online where you order a plant and you get it and you're like, ah, it's good, but I think Instagram made it look a little bit better than it was? Not the case with this. Don't get me wrong. Not the most perfect specimen due to my own fault, really. I could have groomed this off, but I just want you to know that I am indeed learning. It's still very beautiful though. Look at her. She's very pretty. Very, very pretty plant. Let's move on to the Hoya compactors, I think. We'll start with this plant right here that I have in my hands. This plant is also, at least in the UK and EU, quite easy to get. Now I know people might not care if it's easy to get in the EU or not, but I'm aware that people have been saying a lot on the internet that I screwed up a lot in the Hoya Red Plant Index. So I'm kind of just trying to give you my impressions on the market as of uploading this video because obviously that could change but at the moment right now this plant is very easy to get and that is the Hoya Carnosa Compactor. I got this and I thought it was going to be bigger than what it is and I'm a little bit upset about that so you might see me get another one of these and I might just add this to it or I might keep this separately I don't know but I do want a nice big chunky Hoya Carnosa Compactor. It's nice as I say it's just not it's not as nice as I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be longer. It, this one's quite new. I've only had this one maybe a couple of weeks, I think, I don't know. I was holding out buying it just because I thought, well, someone is going to sell a larger one because they're quite common, but it hasn't happened. Don't know if that's a COVID thing or just this is the size that's being sold, but there she is. She's very, very nice. Look at her. She might be green, but she's very, very pretty. I just wish she was a little bit longer, but. That's just me being impatient as hell. 
that's just how I am sometimes. Having a planned shop doesn't really teach you to be patient and wait for the good stuff because you have stuff coming in all the time. So with stuff like this, I'm trying to look for the best things that I can get. Yeah, just, they just, just, just a little bit longer. A little bit fatter would have been good, but that's my Amazon Echo going off. Still got love for this plant though. I don't want any comments saying that I'm being abusive to this plant because I don't love her because she's not long enough. I do love her very much. I will probably add her to another plant or I will get a nice long one as well. Cause I do like her that much. I want more. So we'll pop her back. When I was on my Hoya Carnosa Compactor journey, I noticed that there are different types of Hoya Carnosa Compactor. So obviously I began to try and collect them the best I could. So my next plant I have to show you here is Hoya Carnosa Compacta Regalis Regalis, which I think is the proper name given to the variegated Carnosa Compacta with the white line around the edge. I believe, if I'm wrong, tell me, but that is what I know to be true right now. She is only Diddy right here, but she's very, very cute. I've heard that these are the slowest growing plants on planet Earth and not to expect anything from this. I, it's just not gonna grow very quickly. This is kind of what you're gonna get for a long time. I'm kind of okay with that for reasons that will become apparent in a moment, but this plant is a really, really nice plant. I'm loving this. I'm trying to learn to leave these things alone and not water them. That's separate to me underwatering half of these, but I'm loving this. It's really, really pretty. If you haven't seen a picture of a full plant of these, Really? If you haven't seen an image of a full plant of these, I urge you to please go and look it up because it's really, really good. If you like Hoya Carnosa Compacta, if you don't, then maybe you won't like it. But I really, really love this. It's very, very, very cute. I know it's Diddy and it's probably gonna remain Diddy for a long time, but it's very cute. So this is my Hoya Carnosa Compacta Regalis. Regalis, Regalis, Regalis. Regardless, right? I don't know. I don't know. A confession to make about this plant, a very small confession. I knew that they were slow as shit when I bought it. So I may or may not have gone on a hunt to find a full variegated Carnosa Compacta. And I know a lot of people have seen me say, I don't know if it was previous videos or it was on Instagram, it was, it was on something. I said, look, I want a full plant. They're nearly impossible to get. I realized this very quickly, but oh my God. Alexa. Silence notifications. Sorry, I'm not sure. Alexa. Turn off notifications. Delete all your notifications, right? Yes. Okay, deleted your notifications. I don't want to hear Amazon notifications. Okay. To turn off notifications, visit settings in the Alexa app. Why can't she just do it? Why can't she just do it? I knew when I bought this that this low as shit, they take a long time to grow. And I immediately went on the hunt for a fuller plant. Now you can't really fucking get full plants. You can, you can, but they're just, it's too hard to find. They're nearly impossible to find. But I got as close to a full plant of that plant as I could manage, okay? And I'm gonna show you it now because I, I believe I've underwatered her too. I'm underwatering Hoyas, but let me get it for you. Full disclosure, I have another cutting of one of these that is maybe about eight inches in length. So I have that, I have another one, and then I have this one. So I'd like to introduce to you my gorgeous Hoya Carnosa Compacta. I'm gonna call it Berigardus because I'm sick of getting it wrong, but this is her. And I'm really, really proud to be able to have one this long. They really are impossible to get. Watch, I will say this now, and there will be tons just drop onto the market and I will be very annoyed and I will have to buy one. She's a little bit, she's got soil all over her really where she was kind of posted to me. I've tried to rinse her off, but hasn't worked very well. Now then, I will show you this full plant in all of its glory, but first I want to show you how badly I fucked it up because I believe I've underwatered it. I've had to chuck a few of these out, but a lot of my leaves did this and it was only in one section that they did this. Is it going to focus? There's only in one section of the plant that they did this, but I'm 99% sure it's underwatering on the fact that 
I can't remember when I did water it and they even some of these leaves are still very soft and wrinkly. So I'm pretty sure it's under watering. So that kind of sucks. I waited ages to get a full plant and then I started killing it. My plan is to put more cuttings into it and make it into a bushy plant. Because honestly, I found that's the only way that I'm going to get kind of what I'm after. The cool thing about her is, isn't she great? The cool thing about her is apparently they are super slow growers, but as soon as I've had this in my shop, I put her kind of in front of a grow light and she's already started giving me new growth straight away. And I mean straight away from getting her in. So I'm really happy about this. She's really heavy, but I'll see if I can show you the... I love her. I love this girl. I'm not finished with her. As I say, I want to make her big and fat and juicy and just all up in your face. That will be a project. I don't know how easy these are to get in the US as a full plant, you know, like lots of these. I don't know. But around here, they're not easy. I'm not saying they're super rare or anything like that. They're just hard to get. That's probably because they grow slow. I can only assume. I don't know. I'm really pleased with this little cute little bit that's growing. It's so tiny. This is the biggest one I've managed to get so far. If you have a larger one that you'd like to sell to me, please DM me on Instagram. I would love to buy it from you. But yeah, I'm loving it. Please let me know if that damage up front there is underwatering. I'm pretty darn sure it is, honestly, because most of my plants are suffering from underwatering. You know, you saw my video maybe last week about the tie. It's it's underwatering. It was also under a really bright light, so I'm kind of flexing a little bit over how long this is because the other cuttings I've only managed to find are about this big. <laughs> Isn't she lovely? She's so pretty. I realize these aren't for everybody because a lot of people I speak to just don't care about these, but I really do. Is she good there? I feel she's good there, isn't she? Yeah. Just so people can look at her a little bit more because she's beautiful. So I'm probably ruining the surprises here a little bit for people into Hoya, but there is another type of Hoya Conosa compactor that is kind of lit. It's pretty good. And I wanted one of these too. Now, you can get them in the EU, but shops are stocking them and then just flying out straight away. I know this because I've missed about five of them. <laughs> five restocks on different shops. I can't remember the names of the shops. Uh, I've got some friends that have been linking them to me. Um, but this is not from one of those shops, I should mention. This is from a private seller, the same as this Hoya right here. If you're watching, hello, thank you. I love my Hoyas, they're beautiful. So the other Hoya Carnosa compactor I have to show you can only really be, unless there are more types that I don't know about. And if there are, you need to tell me right now so I can buy them. But this is the Hoya Carnosa compactor, Mauna Loa, if that is how you pronounce it. And this one is quite a nice big one. She has a little bit of gap in her growth down below. So I may root that as a cutting. Let me just show you right there. Can you see that? Is it gonna focus? Yeah. She has a little bit of a gap, so I might just cut this off and then root it. But the cool thing about this Hoya, if you don't happen to know what this is or you haven't heard of it, this is unlike, this is easier to grab, this Hoya here. This Hoya here is variegated on the outside, you know, the leaf margins. And this Hoya here is variegated from the inside. So it's kind of like an inside out variegation. This here, this leaf, you can see the variegation is in the middle and it's green on the margin. And the stems are pretty in pink, so it's a really, really pretty compactor to have. I was really lucky to find this. Somebody got in touch with me about this, and I'm so glad they did, because this is a really, really pretty addition to my collection, which is growing a little bit too quick, actually. I'm starting to realize why you guys are happy to just buy cuttings and then have like a two-leaf cutting that grows out. I totally get it. That's kind of the only way to collect these things. One, because that's how they're sold, and two, you need all the room you can get. I get it. I do get it. I didn't get it before. I really didn't get it before. But you need to know I get it. Unless it's with Compactor. But yeah, this is her Hoya Carnosa Compactor Mauna Loa. Really, really pretty. I'll try and hold her up again. I have the worst nails in the world right now. I am very sorry if they are a bit ugly to anybody watching. There she is. Really, really pretty. I like her a lot. I'm going to put her down now. I will put her here. What have I got left? I have two small higher in front of me there that you can't see off the frame. And we're, we're almost, I think we're one plant away from being down to the cutting hoyas because I have a few of those. So the next hoya I have to show you here hasn't maybe had the best life. I can't remember if this looked like this before it got to me or after it got to me. I honestly can't remember. I've been so busy, but it has a couple of leaves that have kind of turned slightly yellow. Um, again, I can't remember. 
but it's had two new leaves out in my care, which I'm very happy about. And I kind of like the way this one looks. I did have to Google it because I hadn't heard of it before. Not saying it's rare. I just, I'm new to Hoya. I hadn't heard of it. But this is a very cute little Hoya Parvi Flora. Might be Splash, might not be Splash. Don't know. Can't remember. Apologies. Feel free to correct me. Really cute little Hoya. It might not look like much, but if I can show you that at least the new leaves that aren't you know, a little bit tired looking. Where are the new ones? So here, new leaf here, and then there's another one close to it. If I just show you those right there. But it's very, very nice and I'm liking it. As I say, it's not exactly a good showcase at the minute. It will improve, it will grow, it will get nice and big and juicy. But until then, here she is. I love her. We'll put her down. And I think we are officially into the cutting stage. So, the first Hoya I have, I wasn't expecting to get this. This was a gift from the seller that I bought some of these Hoya off as like a little freebie. This, I am told, is Hoya, I think it's Tom Sony Eye. Just a little cutting. And it's really cute and fuzzy and nice. Again, I wasn't expecting to get this, but it's it's absolutely adorable. This leaf here almost feels like a cat's tongue. I know that's like the weirdest description ever, but it kind of does. It's very odd. But it's cute. It hasn't grown at all. Uh, it's a little bit wobbly in the pot. I think I need to maybe just replant it a little bit. But it's just so cute. Look. Oh, it's so cute, isn't it? As someone that's really starting to appreciate the splash in Hoya, as I mentioned at the start of the video, I'm loving that. That's awesome. So that was a really, really cool gift. Now we're on to the cuttings. Three of them are in Lekka. One is in soil. One has been pulled from a plug container so it's just wrapped and it's kind of doing its thing i'll do that first we're getting a little bit more interesting now not that these other higher are not interesting but for people that are into higher maybe maybe these are starting to become a little bit more interesting shall we say so the first higher i'm going to be straight with you i have more than one of these i bought more than one of these from the same seller i'm just picking this one to show you because the the cuttings i got from this seller are so variable they, they look nothing like one another some of them have really long stems and then a couple of leaves some of them have two big leaves or one big leaf so i have a few of these but this next one i think i'm going to pull it out of the pot because it's pointless showing it to you in a pot because you will soon see it's, it's come out of a plug um this should be hoya i can't pronounce it really sorry hoya Dekii, Dekii, I don't know, but this is her and she's awesome. Just want to show you that she's got this cutting in particular has got four real fat, real juicy leaves. She's lovely. I like her. I didn't like this kind of Hoya initially. So when I've been looking up Hoya, apart from the compactor family, generally the Hoya I've been going for are very veiny, but they're not chubby. I'm gonna call it chubby because that's kind of what the leaves are like. But I've kind of changed my mind on it because I think sometimes you have to see a full plant of these and that's what I've been missing. I see people with cuttings of them and I'm like, eh, I don't get it. But then you've really got to Google the full plant and what you're trying to let yourself in for because that can kind of change your opinion, I've noticed. But anyway, this is the Hoya. I'm gonna call it Dekii. Sorry if it's wrong but this is the one that I have and it is really, really pretty. I'm loving that. This one has really nice veined leaves. They're really almost bulbous. I think that's a great word for these. And it's a little bit splashy. It's not super splashy, but it's kind of splashy, that one. In terms of the splash, there we go. I don't know if my camera's gonna throw it off. I do need to plant this. This is not supposed to stay how it is at all. I just have not had the time. I know that's getting real old with a lot of people, but I just haven't had the time. But I will plant it and it will be awesome. But that is her anyway. That is Hoya Dekii, 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 Dekii. I don't know. This is like really embarrassing for me. I'm not used to this at all. I feel like I'm just starting my YouTube channel all over again. Right. Okay, and I'm going to now get the three cuttings that are down here in Lekka that I've rooted myself. I feel very proud of this because I was terrified of rooting Hoya cuttings because I just, I don't know how much water is too much water. I really don't, but I will get them now. So the first cutting, I guess, that I've rooted myself, I haven't checked on the roots, but I think since I can't really pull this Hoya out very well, it's got some root. So this is a Hoya that I didn't know about. I saw it and I acquired it like, Pretty, pretty quickly. 
uh, after finding out what it was. I acquired it like 20 minutes after finding out what it was. This is nice. You can get splashier ones. I wouldn't say this is a splash, but this is Hoya... <laughs> Hoya Crassipiolata? I think. I don't know. Uh, I hope people are finding this rather, you know, adorable rather than just embarrassing because I feel pretty embarrassed not knowing these names as they say this is so new to me. This is her and I really like this. Sorry if you can hear the crunch from the liquor, but this is her. She's really nice. She's quite thin. Uh, her leaves are quite thin for her. They're not as like chunky and waxy as like say this one right here, but she's very, very nice. She's nice and veiny. She got the gloss, she got the nice little main vein down here. I like this one a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. It wasn't on a wish list. It wasn't something that I was even looking to own. But the second I saw it, I was like, okay, this this is definitely one for me. So I think this is Hoya Crassipetiolata. Really, really cute, this one. It's leaning to one side and I do not know why. I think when you're growing out Hoya from small plants, the foliage really needs to matter to you or don't bother. I think maybe that's how my journey with the compactors started because this is all you're probably gonna look at for a while and I am discovering that, so you really need to like what you're looking at. But on the plus side, you can have tons of views. Let's put her back down. Right, this is a really long haul. I'm really sorry, but let's just keep going. Okay, so. The next two plants I show you, they look kind of similar, but they're not the same plant. So I'm going to show you this one first. You'll know exactly what I mean when I hold this up, if you're into Hoya at all. You'll know what I mean. But this next cutting I bought maybe two months ago, something like that. A lot of these Hoya were bought two months ago and then I had to kind of stop. But this Hoya here was sold to me as an unrooted cutting. Again, like the last one I just showed you, and I've rooted it myself. And this one definitely has roots because I've seen them. This here is Hoya AH074 and I'm going to put my hand over this and try to show you it up close because it's genuinely very difficult. Can you see that if I take my hand off? There you go. So it's super silvery. There, go up a little bit close to the camera. It's super silvery. Now then, if you don't know what this Hoya is, um, look it up on Instagram because to my knowledge, <laughs> to my knowledge, they don't always look like this. So this one, you may be able to see on this leaf here. The tip of the leaf right here has a green margin. Now, what I know about this Hoya is that this will change with each leaf. So although this looks like a certain other Hoya that you may be familiar with, this is AH074 and this green will change across the plant. So the leaves are quite variable, really. They're not necessarily gonna stay like this. This is just a super silver cutting of one. That is my understanding anyway. And if you look on Instagram and you search for the tags Hoya AH074, then you will see that. You'll see what I mean, they're highly variable. But I'm pretty happy with this one. These are super, super big leaves as well, which I'm happy about, but I'm obviously expecting new leaves to be smaller. I don't know if Hoya do that or not when they've been cut. I don't know. I haven't had any new leaves from any cuttings that I'm showing you today. So I don't know if new leaves are gonna be smaller than that. I'm not sure. I would expect that there are, but if you know the answer to that, then please do let me know down below. Yeah, I've got two Hoya left. So these Hoya, I've been excited about for some time and I had to have them. And if people watched my Hoya Rare Plant Index, then they will know that I had to have these Hoya because I mainly said in that video, I've got to have them. So the first unrooted Hoya cutting that I've had to root myself, it, it could look slightly better than what it does, but I'm just happy to have the plant. And that is Hoya Carnosa. Grey Ghost. Really, really nice. It is different to the previous one. This one will just kind of stay like this. It does have some wrinkly leaves, but I'll just see what the new growth is like on that. I'm sure it'll grow just fine. I can only assume it's rooted. Yeah, I can see some roots, but they're probably few and far between. Oh, th there isn't that many roots. I've just pulled it out. I may as well show you right now what the roots are like on that. Just because I pulled it out anyway. So there, I've got a couple of hairline roots, so I'm nowhere near ready to put that anywhere. I mean, they'll probably be in Lekka for some time anyway. I'm gonna have to replant that. Oh, damn it, why did I pull it out? Why did I do that? Right, I'm gonna have to replant that. That's a little bit irritating, but I'm pretty sure they are slow growing. And I'm sure I've been told that anything with silver variegation, anything very silvery is just not gonna grow very quickly. I assume that is the same as like variegated anything and it's just gonna grow really slow. Again, I don't know shit. Please tell me if I'm wrong. So. 
the last Hoya I have to haul. I've wanted her from the very moment that I saw her. She is stunning. I cannot wait to see new leaves. I cannot wait to get higher light on it and I cannot wait to see it be a full plant. Although admittedly, I'll be waiting quite a long time because this is a small plant. It is a four leaf cutting. It is very wobbly in its pot, so I think I do need to do something about it. But anyway, this is the gorgeous, the beautiful, the stunning, the amazing, the coveted Hoya Wilbur Grapes. And oh my God, I searched for this plant a lot. Believe me when I tell you I searched for this plant a lot. Here she is, right here. She's very cute. She has four leaves. She's very nice. Now, full disclosure, full disclosure. I have ordered more than one of these. I do have another one coming from the other seller. So you will see me haul this twice. I haven't gone balmy. I, well, I guess I have, I bought two, but just in case you see it again, I have hauled this twice. My understanding of why these are super awesome is because obviously they are very silvery. The leaves remain nice and pretty and kind of rounded. And I believe, I don't know if this is right, they emerge kind of pinky. I don't know if that's a high light thing or they just emerge pinkier. I've just got this. I've had this cutting for less than a week and it's just got here. So I can't tell you too much about it. So I don't know how pink it's supposed to come through. I really, really don't. So if you know below and you can give me kind of the tea on Wilbur Graves, let me know because I'd really, really like to know more about this. I really would. But it's so stunning. I would love in time, and this is obviously a long time, it'd be nice to propagate some of this for the shop. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I know a lot of people are looking for this. This wasn't easy to find, so it, it doesn't surprise me. It does have a price tag to match, to be honest. It's one of those things. I'm just kind of used to it, I suppose. Maybe I'm more used to that than maybe some others because I'm just used to paying out of my ass for a plant. But I'm pleased I managed to find it. I'm really, really happy. And I just, I can't wait for it to grow bigger. Does it have roots? Yes, it does. It needs planted though. That's been planted really weird. There she is again, super close to the camera this time so you can see. How pretty is she? <laughs> Love it. Absolutely gorgeous. So most of these Hoya, I will probably keep in their current plant pots, at least until I know what I'm doing. I know that you probably shouldn't repot Hoya too often at all because they just do not like that shit. So a lot of these will probably remain as they are. Even in terms of the variegated compactor that I have, before I add to it, I might just wait. I might just add other cuttings to a separate one and not disturb this one because I, I don't I don't know what I'm dealing with if I'm totally honest with you since I bought these I haven't done too much with them I didn't want to wait any longer to give you this haul because honestly this has been so long coming I'm sure I've been talking about this for like a month straight it's been a little bit insane so here is maybe a third of it maybe half of it somewhere in between a third and a half of my collection I'm very very pleased I love every single one of them so I will let you know how they're doing you will probably see them on the next plant shop tour, no doubt they will be there. And hopefully we will see a lot of progress on them. So about the next Hoya haul, I don't know when it will be. And I say this, I didn't know when it was gonna be a month ago and I still don't know when it will be. The seller has not sent me them yet. The second they do send me them, I will be hauling them when I get them. But I don't know when that is. And that is largely, I'm told, due to COVID. So obviously I don't want to put a box in the mail and have it go missing for up to four weeks. The hire in that box cost me a lot of money. So I don't want anything to happen to them. And I would rather wait, even if I had to wait another month, another two months, just for things to be okay. I'm happy to do that. That is really not an issue. So I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna wait. That was my Hoya haul today. I'm sorry if I'm really embarrassing as a new Hoya parent. I don't know everything. If anything, I know nothing. So I'm sorry if my lack of knowledge irritates everybody because I know it did in the Hoya Repon Index and that really wasn't intended. So I apologize for getting it wrong. In my defense, I was probably always gonna get it wrong because I, I, I don't know Hoya. Thank you for putting up with this exceptionally long haul. Um, if you're not into Hoya and you're here for Aroids, 
uh, I'm sure I will be doing something more R&D next week. Let me know if any of these Hoya, as a non-Hoya person, make you think about getting them. Or maybe if you are a Hoya person, what do you think of my choices? Because I'm kind of curious to know if these are like good Hoya to have or if there's some that I'm really missing. If there are some that I'm really missing, let me know. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. I can't wait to see you next week where it may or may not be another repop with me. So round about the time you're seeing this video, I will probably put out something on Instagram asking you guys to send me questions or topics to talk about. So I look forward to that and I will see you next week. Bye guys.